Hi, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Uh, so this is our third uh, uh, part of the PIT instruction. Um, so I hope that uh, last two PIT instructions were helpful. So, and I maybe just say like a few words about the last two pit instructions because uh, uh, some of you might be uh, first time listening or some of you might be uh, forgot what for the last last two time was so um, so first first was finding fullness in emptiness finding fullness in emptiness in terms of uh the Dzogchen teaching and uh, in terms of my understanding of the Dzogchen teaching in terms of my experiences how i can bring this uh very profound teaching in a very simple and in our ordinary life so that was the what we're trying to do is um so our nature is unbound I say our essence is unbounded um, and that unbound unbounded wholeness or the fullness is who really we are the unbounded wholeness fullness who really we are but we very often in our experiences of our life we tend to lose their connection to the wholeness and we from dualistic point of view we get very separated from our self our source we begin to identify with our pain weakness even uh, even the antidotes even even the idea of ideologies religions like in different t traditions and so on but tradition not in a sense trying to trying to understand understand the essence of the teaching and apply and transform oneself but tradition in a sense sometimes we just identify with the tradition rather than really getting the the wisdom from the tradition so that then it what, what wherever we identify i am this i am a buddhist it becomes a problem source of problem i am uh, identifying with a specific religion without getting the point becomes a pr problem. So anyway, a sense of fullness is very much um, our own essence. And we did a guided meditation. I hope that those meditation was helpful and those you, uh, those you are coming first time, you can look back, I don't know, a couple of times. I, I think our host Mariela is here. So maybe Mariela can uh, send the link of us uh, finding fullness in emptiness and then also uh, second one was discovering the light in the darkness so discovering the light in a darkness uh, light also in terms of the metaphorically li light so that we um, the light, darkness in environment and uh, if imagine if there is no sun uh, it will be difficult uh, even long winter becomes difficult. Uh, imagine if there was no electricity at all. Imagine. Uh, imagine there is no light in your room. So environmentally, if there is no light, it's hard to see things, hard to move, hard to know. Uh, so same way, internally, when we are not uh, conscious, when we are not aware, and primarily when we are not aware of who we are, then we have a doubt of everything, everybody. And that doubt, that darkness, and obscures uh, our connection to the source. Therefore, sometimes we just feel uh, lost in darkness. Uh, and our uh, duality, our conflicts, our pain, our uh, negative emotion, sense of depression, lost, uh, hopelessness, these all are an experience of the darkness of lost. So 
but if we if we are able to uh, recognize the sense of loss if we are able to uh, find uh, i know last like my last teaching some of number of you have made a uh, comment about being helpful idea of little little light uh, you know just feeling a little light and then through that little light with a hope of gradually looking for finding a bigger light uh, bigger awakening, bigger experiences, but not com not completely uh, looking for a big light or big sense of awareness, wisdom, which, which is not there yet for you in that particular given circumstances in one's own life. So, and just looking for it, then just kind of um, loses the hope, some sense. But if you look at in the winter, uh, cloudy, cold, dark. If you look up in the sky, maybe a lot of cloud, but then there's some moment it opens up a little bit. Then you see in in this all this mass mass of big cloud, and you see a little hole between these clouds. You see a a sky. You see a light, and just know the light is behind those clouds. Know. The clear sky is behind those cloud, so that unbounded space is behind that cloud, and the the light is behind that cloud. So some sense of through that little hole, through that little light in life, uh, trusting that, and 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 somehow not look, not giving up the hope. Uh, that is, if we talk a little bit about you know how. Anyway, we talk a number of things about discovering the light in darkness. I hope that. Uh, you all remember and you are able to go back and you are able to uh, do these simple exercises, exercises I recommend it. And uh, so that was last two, uh, um, the pith instruction. And today is the last one. So for, for the rest of this, until September 6th, uh, uh, September 6th, we are coming back with a very, uh, happy and excited about it and that uh, the six uh, different spiritual traditions uh, of Tibet they're from different schools and they all we are all coming together on this Facebook and and each one of them are uh, very specifically going to present the five wisdom teachings. I have requested them very specifically. They will, we will have a quotations. Then we will hopefully translate them, and uh, they will share their understanding. They are very geishas and uh, uh, teachers and high, highly educated. Uh, and uh, so, so anyway, uh, until uh, September six. So then we will not have any pith instruction. So until then, so. Uh, so today is our uh, the last one here. So today is the unification of three spaces. So unification of three spaces is a we say namka sumjur. This is a specific term uh, coming from Dzogchen tradition and sp specifically coming from more in the burn tradition. Uh, uh, at least the, what I'm teaching here is coming from the Bairn tradition, um, the the Shang cycle of teaching. It's called unification of three space, namka sumjur. So three spa practices of three spaces unifying together. And uh, I will just read a quote from Tibetan text. It says, "Puni semi namki ingi sum." Kalde semla nime chiktugum. Puni semi namke ingi sum, kalde semla nime chiktugum. Puni semi namke ingi sum, kalde semla nime chiktugum. So, what it's saying here, puni means like a bun essence, phenomenal essence. That means uh, the essence or the truth of every phenomena, every existence. So, the truth of this pen, for example. What is the truth of this pen? This pen 
it's nothing more than just a space. So every matter is 99.99% space. So the, everything is space, even though everything looks like a very much uh, concrete, yeah, all the matters are space. And um, so that puni, that's what it means. Uh, they all are space. Semni, second one, semni means the essence of mind. Our mind is also unbounded space. Now, our mind, even though it looks like a very uh, solid, concrete, um, a very sense of identifiable, uh, kind of big problem maker, uh, or also mind is beautiful, uh, but it looks like something very uh, solid, inherent, independent, but it's very interdependent, uh, lack of inherent existence. Uh, it's basically a space, space, just like a, uh, if you, every time when we do the Salaya Mantra, uh, singing the prayer mantra, I, I play every time when I do the face, Facebook Live, so, so this is, I feel every time when I do that, I feel really helps me to fill that space. Uh, and not only I it makes from my subjective point of point of view, it it makes um, me feel more space. But also uh, with the heart mat, this uh, little gadget about reading the heart variation, and um, so according to the result from that, my heart rate and everything else, it it much, much more higher result, uh, better when I uh, listening and when I'm trying to tune into the mantra and re remain in that space because Salewe means clear light mantra, Salewe. So it is, it brings in that clear, uh, which is the fullness, uh, light, which is what illuminates the darkness, the second pith instruction. So that clear light, uh, means that. So, so the second one is the simni, the essence of the mind or the, the uh, um, unbounded space of the mind. Namki yingyi, namki yingyi means the uh, space of the sky. So basically, um, yeah, so if I'm uh, looking at the sky in this room, or the space in this room, of course, uh, I, somehow out there, I always see an object, but in between, before the object, I also experience a space in which I exist, in, in which these objects are existing. And I can also feel that, that sense of space within myself, my body, every, the cell in my body, energy in my body, electron in my body, they all are like a, like a speed of movement, dynamic energy movement in that space. So there is that sense of space. But also, sometime in, in, in t tradition here, in the Dzogchen tradition, it also talks about the outer, outer space, like a sky. So this is also some, somehow, I think it's very, very important that sometime when we have a very difficult, I can, I can sometimes imagine that, you know, um, when we talk about these different spaces and this and that, like a kind of very ab uh, abstract, uh, I don't know how you feel, but sometimes maybe people might feel like very abstract, but then sometimes sky, you know, looking at the sky, we know um, sky, we, we all, I think we all love sky. I uh, definitely, uh, uh, you know, one of the reason, one of the reason I moved in, moved to California, is is this I was so much in love with the sky there, and uh, so every time I look at the sky, I just feel m much more closer connection to that inner space, and uh, and that sense of closeness to inner space, it feels like I'm ho at home. I am in the right place. I am connected to that inner mother, and that that sense of connection 
just uh, my tears of some sense of closeness uh, immediately comes out. So I mean, I feel that. So this sense of uh, space is somehow very important. So uh, a, f a friend of mine told told me, she said that um, having not having difficult to practice deep sense of the uh, the space of phenomena or the space of the nature of mind. But she said some, sometime when she was feeling very, very down, um, very weak, and uh, she said she just, in the morning, she went out, just look at the sky. Just look at the sky. Nothing specifically, mantra, meditation, complicated visualization, nothing. Simply just going out, sitting comfortably, resting, and gazing the sky. And she said that just doing that half an hour that day was completely different for her than the days that she did not, days that she skipped that, she did not do that. So I believe that completely because um, um, something that you cannot internally find it, but externally you're exposed to it, it's just, a, easier to make connection outside when you're open enough, when you have some sense of trust enough to doing that. It's easier to sit, relax and just gaze the sky or look at the space and just rest, simply just resting for half an hour. And so that is, she said it helped her a lot. So, so just telling a little bit about the story about the space, you know, when I was growing up in the monastery, um, around 11, 12 years old. I remember uh, a Dokshya master called Sundur Rinpoche. And um, every day, like in the morning and the evening, uh, he goes up to the, up to the hill in the, near the, mon in the, in the monastery, around the monastery. And he goes up to the hill and then he just go there for a couple of hours. So basically, and I, I, we all, everybody knew that the reason why he went up the hill is because either he was doing a sky gazing, means just basically uh, gazing a sky, and uh, or uh, gazing the sunlight, not directly, but uh, the practice of light. So basically, there's a two things. One is the practice of space. And the second is the practices of the light. But these practices of space, of internal space, but with the help of out, outer space. Or practice of light, the inner light, but with the help of outer light of sunset. So some sense of outer sky, outer sunlight, it's uh, helping to enhance this inner uh, experiences of light. So that that's what I, I, that that's what he was doing every day. So so these are like a very very important practice. Of course, of course, there are very very specific um, practices that people do uh, uh, in relation. I mean, very very profound, very detailed, very specific, uh, with a lot of preparation one needed to do this practice. But what I'm saying here is on a, on a simpler version of that. I'm not saying the same level of that Lama was doing, but I'm talking about something that you all can, we all can do. And um, which is, you know, just sitting outside comfortably when, when you really feel the lack of space inside. You feel like a, your inner space is completely occupied by darkness, by pain, by conflicts, by stories. Um, there's no moment of kind of break there. Uh, when you feel, begin to feel like that, so during those moments, and basically, and even you, when you're trying to do some kind of practices, it's very, very, very difficult because even everything that you have learned and uh, that you have tried in the past, uh, they, don't, they're no long, they don't seem like working anymore because uh, you are you are in the space in a so much lost in the dark and or angry or fearful that it seems like a practice are not working anymore 
So, so some sense when when you are in the, that kind of severe situation, there's not much to do, but you can just go out and sit outside and just look at the sky for 10, 15 minutes. And so, so, and then slowly expanding more time doing that. By doing that, you will feel more space. So that's the general idea of unification of three space. So, so let's say this way. One, another way will be these practices can be called like a externalizing or internalizing. So externalizing will be something that you you're strong enough to feel these things inside and and for example you're strong enough to experience simni like the the unbounded space of the nature of mind so feeling that unbounded space within yourself simni and then you can you're looking outside like uh, in the sky you feel moment you look at the sky it's like a inner sky and outer sky get like a mixed or unified or like a pouring a water from the tap to the ocean or something like that just two water get unified or two space get one smaller one one bigger one get unified and when when you th when that happens then that is like a outer sky then the third one will be um, phenomenal space is the phenomenal space is the object space uh, I don't know, like uh, stories that we have, so much stories. For example, the example of the phenomenal space will be, object space will be, sometimes we don't feel space. Think about a house, right? Um, and um, that uh, after parents passed away, that all the ch children are having legal battles against the property the old home, now who owns it, who gets what, and that the object house becomes so solid, part of the family collective pain story, is an object, is a house, but that house is so strong, and um, that's, so there's no space in this house, there's no flexibility in that house, there's no warmth in that house anymore, there is a deep conflict or or two people again sorry to say these negative things but these are example of how how object are occupied lack of space or people trying to um yeah so anyway i think that's enough story um that we lose is this sense of space in things that we our to our stories our story becomes so big and so heavy, and uh, in that those story, there is no space. So maybe look at that, your stories. A story of couple in the process of separation, divorce, but strong one. They see each other only the dark side, negative side. They don't see each other moment they met, moment they are interested in each other, moment they um, contact, moment uh, beautiful moments, uh, loving moments, caring moments. They don't remember any of those things. They remember the dark side of the story and each other. And th that space is totally occupied. There is, there is no space. So, so these are a sense of how we lose the space, either it's in the object or in this outside also, you know, sometimes sometime you, you, when you, when you are okay, when you, you feel okay, you are walking out the street, you see today is a beautiful, beautiful day, beautiful clear sky, uh, I say it's a fresh, and you walk out with some sense of deep sense of joy, you're walking out, and then you see this person walking right in front of you like it just does not see anything. Does not see the clear sky, does not feel the fresh air, does not see this beautiful little cute puppy 
walking around there or the beautiful this little innocent child smiling and, and it's giving us some sense of smile does not cease anything it just walks through totally space is occupied and so what we, what we need we do need to, to discover the sacred space we have to find the sacred space If there is no space, there is nothing. So you cannot skip the space. Compassion, genuine compassion comes out of the space. Genuine strength comes out of the space. Even, even ability to handle pain comes out of that space. For that space gives birth to, to confidence, clarity, awareness. Then one is capable of dealing individual and collective pain stories. But when, when one is not enough clear or not finding that connection to the space or not finding that confidence in that space, not finding enough clarity with that awareness and trying to handle collective pain, it's a dangerous because one might make it worse. One in the in good intention to try to clear, but one can contribute more because one has lost more than the story of itself. One, one is part of the story. One is not the one who is clearing the story. That is, that becomes in our life all the time that happens. So this, this sense of space, I think it's very, very important to, for all of us. So finding your own power to protect yourself, to heal yourself, then heal the situation, then heal the others. These are kind of sequence, not the other way around. So, so anyway, um, I just wanted to give, um, we're running out of time, so I wanted to give a little bit some concrete examples or ex exercises. So three things, basically. Okay, let me just say two, uh, first three things. So simple connection to the space. So maybe five to 10 minutes or five to half an hour, depends on each person's ability to sit. Five to five minutes to half an hour, connection to the sacred space, connection to the sacred sky. So just basically just going out where you can see more sky, finding a comfortable place and just just look at the sky uh, like a, a resting in the sky not visualizing nothing not trying to hoping nothing not trying to avoid anything simply resting in that unbounded sky five minute to half an hour um, you can do two different ways either just gaze the sky or the sky itself like going up to the roof top of the mountain uh, top on the bridge where you can have a little more exposure to the sky um, just watching sky if it's that works if you feel you need a little more support because you're it's not strong enough to just rest. Then you listen to the Salewe Mantra. sing you can listen but with the support 
try without support. If you need support, do with support. But not trying to visualize, do anything. Just you're, you're connecting to the sky. You're feeling that sky. You're allowing that space to feel inside. That's the first exercise. Second exercise will be light and clarity and awareness, allowing to arise. But if, if the second exercise does not have to be immediately when you do the first one. Maybe you can do the first one for a month, for example, or for a whole week. But if you feel that your first exercise is ability to rest in the, in the sky, with the sky, on the sky, uh, fully, uh, with some sense of deep confidence, then you can pay a little attention to the awareness. The awareness means this, this stronger sense of connection, the connectedness to that space. the awareness to that space. Feel that more and more. And there could be an, after that, after first exercise, could be another, another ex week, exercise of another week, another month. And the last one will be uh, every single day, I think every single day, trying to do Maybe I was thinking about the numbers. What will be the right numbers to say? I thought maybe three. Then maybe I said no, five. Usually I say five, but I, this time I'm saying nine, nine thing, nine positive actions every single day. We talked about we talked about um, um, the light, discovering the light in a darkness. I talked. I talked during that uh, talk that even though sometimes you feel feel very heavy and dark, but you can still feel the kindness. Even though you are angry, you can still feel the compassion. Even though it's difficult to forgive, you can still feel some space So, so regardless of how empty it is or how dark it is, how lost you are, there is always some positive actions can be done. So it's like a sense of commitment. I will do every single day a nine positive actions. And maybe you think, oh, nine, number nine is a lot. You know, I don't know. I don't know. When I feel really down, nine is a lot. No, no nine is not a lot. Nine, it just depends on how you count, right? You just um, walking and just give a, a beautiful open smile to somebody. That's a positive action. Or you're walking down and you're feeling not so excited, happy, but you also see somebody else is there, and you just say, hi, good morning. Maybe how often you go walk through that, you do not say hi, you do not connect, contact, you do not say good morning, but it's, is the opportunity to say, hi, good morning. You know, one does not have to be lost in that pain, darkness, anger. One can feel them, but you don't have to get lost in them. One can still be spacious. One can still say the right thing. And trying to feel that, maybe sometimes you feel a lot, sometimes you feel not much, but still action you can say, hi, how are you? Good morning. And what do you get response of good morning? They will say good morning back to you. What do you get a response of smile? They will smile back at you. 
you did not only do one good action by smiling and saying good morning to somebody, you did two. Somebody else said good morning to you. You have made them connect to you. You, you allowed them to connect. Sometimes, some people, they are so much in pain, lost, it takes time. It's okay. And you understand, not everybody is in the same level. There are, might be, you are feeling bad, maybe they might be feeling worse. But you are in process of connecting strangers in the street to connect some higher human qualities, exchanging higher human qualities of connect, connectivity, connections. So, so my recommendation here as an exercise is nine different positive actions, not intentions. Count them. As I'm saying it, I've already promised myself, I do trying to do more than nine, but I will make sure I'll do nine. And these actions are from the body, when we say um, fullness in emptiness, the light in darkness, unification of three space, the manifestations, it's like the same thing, like a body, speech, and mind. Something with your body, something with your speech, something with your mind, just, just the sense of a warmth toward your partner. Just just look at your partner with a sense of warmth. Or look at your child, that sense of warmth. Or look at some sense of openness, person who is very close to you, who is angry at you. That is a virtue aspect of mind. So, darkness can be the cause to find a light. Emptiness can be the cause to find a fullness. Our own, our own pain can be the source of, and it is the source of joy too. It's always about your relationship to the darkness, your relationship to that emptiness, your relationship to your pain. Many times people produce more pain with the pain. Like I hear sometimes uh, families, pain, pain family stories where people are like um, very not not feeling not having perfect parents or something like that, you know? And I too, I, I don't, my, uh, my mother was different. My father was uh, uh, not necessarily a perfect, uh, uh, how you say, yeah, uh, kind or probably, I will not say they're not kind, but with a hardship situation in some sense could, could have been better. But I do not hold any anger. In fact, I've been kind of writing some poems. I don't even remember his face fully that much. I'm trying to remember. A few times coming to visit me, I remember. I remember him being difficult with my mother and me. But I totally, totally uh, forgive. And because the conditions in which the time was different, conditions were different. His awareness, collective awareness was different. His understanding of the world was different. Everything was a different time. I'm, if I judge him what I know, blessing of my teachers and practices and everything, what I have now, some sense of wisdom eyes to 
look back and kind of judging like that, I don't feel it particularly fair to to him. So I. Um, so anyway, the sense of uh, what I'm saying here is sense of uh, of forgiveness to you know in in the deep family stories, because I think deep family stories are very important uh, process of healing. Then then it's a bigger collective stories because somehow we are rooted more in our family stories. Then if they are clear, more clear, uh, more. Uh, healed and our more co more like a bigger social uh, collective situations might be easier to heal anyway so going back to this this sense of n uh, nine uh, positive actions so body speech mind body speech and mind so um, Yeah, maybe some of you might be thinking, well, I love to do that, but I'm feeling so down. I'm, feel, I'm feeling so angry. And the, when you say that, what you're saying is I cannot do it. And if you believe you cannot do it, probably very likely you will not be able to do it. Your nine, nine positive actions, not intentions. But if you believe that I feel like that similar sometime. No matter how difficult you are in, there's no way you can do, not do positive actions. You can do. Sometime you can do far more stronger positive action those moments because you are shaken inside. You're moving inside. You are discovering deeper aspect of yourself. You are becoming like inner warriors. Not only you can do positive action, but you can do big ones. So I think it's very important. Uh, I would recommend everybody to just at least nine trying to do every day. World needs that. Today's world definitely needs some positive actions. More uplifting energy, more inspiration, more connection, more support. The world needs that. Thank you. So I, uh, I think we are going to uh, do a short meditation. So I, I will do a little guided meditation. So please uh, sit comfortably. Allow, bring your full attention to this moment, to this place in your body. Be fully aware of your body and allow it to fully rest in the stillness. Feel that stillness in your body. And allow to let dissolve all the sense of emptiness, a pain, a sense of darkness, a conflict, negative energy, 
Let it let all dissolve into the stillness of the body. All the energies of the pain body dissolve into, allow it to dissolve into in this stillness. Of course, whatever those stories are, your story or the, your story of your life, your story of this moment in your life, whatever they are, they are all okay. Let them dissolve in this moment, in this space. Let all this noise of pain, conflict, argument, dissolve into this beautiful silence so we can find the inner silence, peace, clarity, a true voice, a voice of compassion and power. Let all the pain mind, stories of the mind, dissolve, let it dissolve into the inner space, the spaciousness of the mind. And feel the inner crystal clear sky like a crystal clear sky in the desert no a spot of light and clouds so rest in that inner sky outer sky the space or space in all those stories the space, the space, the space, with a sense of awareness and connection as we hear the clear light mantra.
Thank you. Um, I hope um, the explanation of unification of three space and this little meditation was helpful. And uh, also just the explanation of unification of three space, one can try to find one's own way to do that practice. So, um, and so on. we are gonna conclude. Um, just again, to reminder, September 6th, we have um, from all the different spiritual, Tibetan spiritual traditions, uh, all the schools are coming together. And these are very, I think it's special, uh, special. We are able to do this because uh, sometimes, as we all know, you know, uh, different schools and different traditions, sometimes everybody has a wish to come together, but not always easy to come together because everybody is busy in doing own, their own things and sometimes people are not able to be close to each other enough. So I think this is a, really like, a, a, I'm so happy that they all accepted invitation and they wanted to come together and they wanted to share. Uh, this is a, a wonderful uh, that they all come together in, in one platform, able to share their wisdom. Um, I hope maybe someday in the future that we can do, you know, uh, like, a, I don't know, one week retreat. Uh, the, like we will announce this much, much in advance. So whole week of retreat that uh, uh, different teachers, uh, leading practices um, for, for you, for all the Cyber Sangha, it will be like a whole week of uh, teaching and meditation able to do with different teachers and different practices, but the theme is a similar, but like um, four sessions a day, but uh, for different teachers it will not be too much work, but at least, uh, you know, that you have whole week, every day, like four sessions of teachings or something like that for free, which is important, that I think uh, these kind of platform are, there's no cost. There's a lot of very wonderful, generous people who are, giving their effort to helping me to do these things, organizing it. And we're all giving our time, energy to share and connect with all of you. So this is, we are so happy to do that. And so uh, people who are not able to travel, not able to, uh, you know, this is a great resources to able to do this, like a free week long full retreat, able to do like that will be, uh, look forward in the near future. And um, then uh, the one more last thing is the, this is about, you know, I mentioned last time, there's indigenous uh, elders, elders from different indigenous community around the world, different continent. Um, so we hope to, we are right now taking some time. We are right now, a whole team of us working together, really every day, these days, every day we are working to pull things together so that we can have and one platform that all these indigenous people from different part of the world, they come together and they share their uh, wisdom, their, share their advice to how to heal the earth, uh, how to balance ourselves with the earth with the, with, through their wisdom traditions. Uh, we need to, to hear from voices of these elders. I think that regardless of we agree or not, we understand or not, at least willing to listen uh, it's important and and some I know like sometime that like having a five of them together like last time all the wonderful female teachers able to have come together it, it's difficult to have a long length length conversation because of the lim limitation of time but at least I felt so good that we are together uh, con with, with each other and connecting and uh, we have never maybe met each other or not met long time each other, but able to connect. I think that this able to connect, it's I think it's very, very important not lose the opportunity to connect. Uh, because if you, if you don't can, if you cannot connect, then we lost, lost the whole point of doing anything. Uh, and so I think the indigenous people coming together, sometimes they are, I don't know, one up in the Peru and one up in Sikkim mountains, 
but it's very difficult for them to come together. But in this platform, we can bring all together with all of Cyber Sangha. I think this is a, I really look forward. And I don't know when exactly it's going to happen. Probably it might happen if we can able to put together, it might happen in December, if not sometime in January, February, hopefully. So I will let all of you know. So until September 6th, uh, I hope you all practice with the, uh, last three pit instructions and uh, thank you all my blessings love